QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021, class tracking, what it is, how to turn it on, and when to use it. Let's get into it with Intuit, QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Here we are in a test file within QuickBooks Desktop. Now we will set up a test file in future presentations, but for now, we just wanna see where is the class tracking located? How do we turn on the class tracking? And then what are the general uses of the class tracking feature? So we currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view dropdown, selecting the open windows list. To turn on the class tracking, it's gonna be under the preferences in the dropdown. Before we do so, let's take a look at an income, a data input uh, screen before we add the class tracking. If we go down, for example, to a check down below, if we just write a normal check, then we don't have any field to basically apply the class tracking. And that's why it's not included by default. In other words, if you don't, if you just set up your QuickBooks system, you will not have class tracking on because by default it will be off. And one reason that may be is because it can kind of clutter your data input screens if you do not need the class tracking. We're going to end up with another column over here for the classes, which is really useful if we want to use the classes. But if we do not need them, then it's just going to clutter up our screen a bit. And therefore, it's basically off by default. So that means that if you want to use the class tracking, you got to turn it on. If you want to practice the class tracking, you're going to have to turn it on. So I'm going to close this back out. And then we'll check it out again after we turn on the class tracking by going to the edit dropdown, going down to the preferences. So edit preferences, accounting tab to the left, then the company preferences on the right. And then we have this use class tracking for transactions. That's the one we want. So we want to use that. Then this one is going to be on by default, which is to prompt to assign classes. Now you typically want that on if you're going to be assigning classes because in general, you want to assign a class if using classes to every transaction. So this does add some time to the data input process to use the class tracking because you have another field that basically you're going to have to be applying every time you enter a transaction. So let's take a look at it now. If I then say OK uh, and apply that, let's go ahead and look at our check now. So if we go down to our check, now we have the class tracking down here. So we have this nice field that we can have the class tracking. And then we could set up basically a class. And, I, and if I just set up, you know, class one, class one tracking. And then I'm going to say, okay. And we enter a transaction for, let's say, $1,000. And the other side is going to go to utilities. And then I'm going to say, save and close. And then if I wanted to go up top and run a report, say a profit and loss by class, which is the common report to be run in reports drop down, we would then go down to the company and financial instead of the standard profit and loss. I want to see it by class, P&L by class. So, and, and there we have it. There's our, our $1,000 transaction broken out by the class. Now, if I entered another transaction and did not classify it, let's go back to the home page and let's just say that we entered another check. And then uh, we, we said this one is going to go for uh, $500. And this is going to go to the telephone expense. And I'm not going to assign a class this time. I'm just going to leave it as is. And I'm going to save and close. And it says uh, one or more items have not been assigned to class. That's that warning sign saying, hey, don't you want to assign it to a class? We're going to say no. Save it anyways. And then I'm going to go to the profit and loss. And so now we have this unclassified area. So this is one that we didn't assign a class to. These are the ones that did. Now this unclassified area is kind of nice because you can actually go into there after the fact in QuickBooks and just reclassify everything that's in the unclassified area. So if I want to then classify this into say class two, I can double click on it, drill back down into our data input and maybe set up a new class here, class, which is class two that uh, we might want to set up and I put two I'm not two s's and whatever so then I'm going to save that save and close and there we have that and then if I go back to my transactions or my profit and loss by class and update it so now we have our two class trackings and then the total so that's kind of the breakout that's that's how you can imagine the breakout being now if we start using that class tracking then then of course the question is well when can we use that that could be a, a useful tool because now we're breaking out our income and expenses uh, by column, right? I can break them out by column so I can get a nice total over here. And I can also break them out by column with the use of these classes. So that's a powerful tool. It's used in a lot of different uh, areas. And if you don't have any uh, experience with that, then you probably want to you know, think of one of these areas that you can apply it out to 
and and uh, use the class tracking, get get familiar with the class tracking because it's a it's a useful tool. And there's going to be similar tools, of course, in other types of um, accounting software. It might be called something different, but a similar functionality. So with, when might we use the class tracking feature then? So we're thinking about a situation. We're visualizing a situation where our profit and loss is being broken out by certain segments. We want to break out our profit and loss by segment by column so that we can break it out by column and then have the total for the total profit and loss. Now note in QuickBooks Pro, you don't have the class tracking feature. You can't apply it to the balance sheet. So you're not going to be able to break out the balance sheet in the same fashion. If you upgrade above the QuickBooks Pro for the desktop version, you may be able to break out the balance sheet items as well by class. But right now we're thinking just the income statement, income statement then broken out, the performance statement broken out by class. So if you can break out the income statement by class, when might that be useful? What kind of situations would you apply that to? So you might track profitability by division. For example, if you had like a maintenance division and an installation division, maybe you want your income statement and you can apply the two, two uh, classes to them, visualizing then a vertical income statement. You got your two columns, one for installation and one for uh, one for the maintenance division that could then add up to the total. So we could have the track profitability by locations. So we might have different locations that are physically different locations, different stores and whatnot that we can then put in one file and we can break out what is earned in total as well as what is being earned by location by imagining these two separate columns on the income statement tracking the performance. They both will feed into the total column in the right. That column, of course, then will feed into the balance sheet, adding to the equity section, you know, as it rolls in in the closing process into the balance sheet. We could have nonprofits can track income and expense by grant, event, and project. So nonprofit have special needs, special tracking needs oftentimes, and therefore when using QuickBooks, we'll often use the uh, class tracking feature in order to, to apply to some of those special needs. So we'll take a look at that. We have a whole course on that as well. Also note that when you're thinking about the class tracking, there's some overlap to functionality that uh, between class tracking and job cost systems. So tracking by job or tracking, sometimes the term is sub customers, tracking by sub customers or similar to that is projects. If you ever heard of like uh, projects. So there, there's some overlap in when you might use some of these different tools and techniques. Nonprofits often will use both uh, a class tracking tool and the uh, jobs type tool. A, a sole proprietorship can, can use one QuickBooks file to track business and personal income and expenses. Now note that if you talk to your accountant about this, they're probably not going to recommend it, but you can do it. Uh, meaning you can set up basically if you have your own business and you have your uh, personal and you want to track both of those items, typically or traditionally, you would like to do that with two separate QuickBooks files and two separate bank accounts to completely separate the two and then make transfers between the two. But if you have a small not-for-profit, I mean, if you have a small business, a small Schedule C sole proprietorship business, that can be a little bit tedious to do. You can track it in the one system and all you really need, what you really need to track, of course, is the profit and loss because the profit and loss for the business is what will typically be used in order to help generate the tax return at the end of the year. So you can think about your system where you have either one checking account that you're tracking in, in the QuickBooks system, or possibly you can have two checking accounts, which still would be nice to have that separate checking account business and personal. And then you can basically apply out anything that uh, is expenses as you, as you spend or receive money, and you can apply it out by class, either to business or personal, which will give you that basic profit and loss that you're going to be needing in order to do the, the tax return uh, at the end of the year. One of the reasons, you know, like if you talk to a bookkeeper or a uh, CPA firm or a tax preparer, they don't like that because oftentimes if you want to give the job of bookkeeping to somebody else, like if your business grows and you're trying to have someone else help you out with your bookkeeping needs, especially if you don't, do not have two separate check account, checking accounts, it becomes difficult to know <laughs> which items are business and personal. So you kind of, and if you're doing it yourself, you, you have a good idea of that possibly. You can be, have a better idea of what is business and personal, but really what, what the bookkeeper is going to want to separate those two as much as possible so it can be as clean and easy as possible when we go and look at what money was spent on what to know exactly what expense account to put that to. And it's easiest to do that if you have a completely separate file and a separate uh, checking account. So in any case, 
you can do that uh, and you'll probably get some resistance from your tax preparer bookkeeper uh, or and when you're looking for advice on that. So a property management company can track income and expenses by property. So if you have a property management company and you're managing separate properties, then you can use the class tracking to basically break out your income and then allocate that income by property that then adding up to the total income for the total rolling into the to the balance sheet as one so you can so you can imagine that can work well you might use a job system to do this as well you could set up the different uh, uh you might set up a job cost tracking system for properties as well there and so you can think of like there's some overlap with those two systems also you could track projects uh or jobs basically you can you can use the class tracking for a job cost system now you can use you can also use jobs or sub uh, sub customers sometimes they're called at least in the online version they're sub customers and you can do similar kind of reports what will basically break out the income statement by the by the jobs uh, rather than we're thinking about breaking the entire income statement out by the different classes so there's some pros and cons you can basically run a job cost system type of type of activity using the classes using the class feature as well breaking out your income statement by the what you have earned it into right you applied it out you break out your income by the jobs apply out the expenses and income to uh, each of the classes which would be classified as as the jobs and anything that was general would go into general not be applied to the jobs and you can imagine basically an income statement report that would then be applying it out uh, in that format as well in some ways that can be that can be easier again there's pros and cons on that we have a whole course on job costing and comparing and contrasting a couple different methods for doing that uh, as well so those are some of the reasons that why you might use the class tracking now I know a lot of times when people use class tracking or talk about class tracking in QuickBooks it can be kind of a it's one of those things where it's well that's a nice feature and, and but people don't really apply it to anything specific unless they are using it specifically to apply they just kind of know that you can turn it on or they know their specific use of it so what you want to do is have a general idea of what does class tracking do and then where could the cl class tracking apply and then get some idea just practice using it so you get an idea of where that class tracking can be uh, useful so that when you come across a situation that it could be useful you can apply it in the future and when you're talking to people about class tracking you can have more than just kind of like a vague idea of oh that's a neat you know kind of advanced feature uh, within QuickBooks you can have an idea well this is what it does at least and this is where I think it can be uh, useful.